This is the new Lexus RX, and it's a little bit like a Grand Seiko watch because it's Japanese alternative to some classic European luxury. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior, I'm gonna see how practical it is, try out its technology, and of course, take it for a drive. I'm also gonna launch it, see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video with the design of the new RX. Lexus, like everyone else, is now writing their name on the back of the cars rather than going for a classic badge. It's just all the rage nowadays. So too are oh, fake vents. Look, still fake vents. Look, I've got the car wow sticklet of truth to illustrate those are indeed fake, but at least there's no fake exhaust pipes like you might have on a Mercedes <laughs> or an Audi. Anyhow, at the back, I like the design, the full length light bar. Moving down the side, you have alloy wheels starting at 19s, rising to 21s, which is what this car has, because it's the range topping Takumi model. Now you can go for an F Sport, and then you have different colored alloy wheels. You also have like black trim around here and different bumpers at the front and the back. I do like the design of this car. It's distinctive. I like the creases, I like the way this flows there with the chromey bits. Very, very nice. Moving to the front, what's less nice, once again, I'm gonna get the sticklet of truth out. Fake fence. But the rest of it, I do love, and I love Lexus's new grille, but it's a distinctive looking car, doesn't look generic, and it's got plenty of personality, and it looks expensive, because it is expensive. So, look, I'm just going on the Carmel website here, you'll see that it starts from around 60,000 pounds, rising to 80,000 pounds for this range topping version. However, you can save an average of around £1,300 off a Lexus RX through CarWow. So if you're thinking about changing your car, head over to CarWow. You can just do that now by clicking on the pop-out banner up there or following the link in the description below. Not only can you like research your cars, see what savings are available from dealers, you can also sell your current car through CarWow, set up loads of photos, give a brief description of it, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Yes, CarWow is the easiest way to change your car. If you want to do all that at a later date, just simply Google help me CarWow and we will help you change your car. Just like the exterior design, the interior of this new Lexus RX is really nice. So I like the design of it with the different layers, the dash, you've got soft squidgy materials. In fact, the quality is very good in here. I think it's better than its German counterparts, to tell you the truth. So the entry-level car gets a fake leather. As you move up through the range, you get leather materials. However, this range topping Takumi has aniline leather, which means super soft and it's Glorious. I also like the extra light suede bits you get on the door with the Takumi. In fact, all the materials in here feel very, very expensive. The Takumi also has like bamboo or this ash wood here or here on the dash. Hmm. And as for the build quality, yes, it's all solid as you'd expect from a Lexus. And also, as you'd expect with a Lexus, the infotainment system is a bit hit and miss. So I think the screen is really nice and big and bright. It's quite responsive as well. However, the menus are a little bit confusing. So you press this icon here and then you expect to be able to control the infotainment system in this area. But actually the icons then come up down this side for you to like swipe through the different menus. So it's a bit tricky to do when you're driving. Now, most people are just gonna like connect their phone and you can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, one thing to note though is the climate control. Half of it is done through the screen, like the van speed, but the important bit, the temperature lock is done through these knobs here which are very very quick and easy to operate when you're driving speaking of driving it's very easy to get your ideal driving position i always think it's good in lexuses maybe it's because you know it's a japanese manufacturer so it's used to building cars that are right hand drive plenty of movement in the seat as well regardless of how big or tall you are you should be fine in this car one thing i'm not so sure about though is this little nubbin of a gear selector seems a bit old-fashioned doesn't it they could just have some buttons that'd be better the other driving buttons down here are much more modern looking the digital driver's display is only okay it's not quite as big as i'd expected based on the size of the instrument binnacle a lot of the space is just taken up by the fuel gauge and the battery meter and the warning lights which you're probably never going to see because it's a lexus obviously you can scroll through different menus but once again they just take up a small part of the screen i think lexus could have done better in that area let's move on to practicality here in the front so i like this feature to get into the storage underneath the armrest you can open it that way or you can open it that way obviously can't open it that way but it's a nice big space like that you've got two cup holders there and actually this is a test of quality in a car see how damped the sliders and covers are look so there's some more storage down there and you've got your wireless charging and your usb connector there and another usb-c charger there but look nicely damped 
So the glove box. Well, that's nicely damped and lined with felt. Look, nicely damped, feeling premium. What else can we try? Oh, I know this. Oh, that's nicely damped as well. All feels expensive. Got another couple of cubbies. This one here, the secret one. Even that's damped. They're not normally damped. And it's lined. Stops your coins rattling about. It's obviously the coin holder. And finally, the one here for your glasses. Once again, lined and nicely damped. Yeah, it all feels lovely. Hmm. Anyhow, enough of that. Let's continue with the practicality. Door bins, big. And even the plastic on the door bins is soft and yielding. I do like the inside of this car. It's gorgeous. But is it as gorgeous for those in the back? Now, before we move into the back, I'm going to do this. I'm going to open the sunblind. You get a panoramic roof on the top two trim levels of the car. Look. I think you're going to want to fit it. Looks good. Love a big glass roof. First test then, knee room. That's good. Second test, headroom. That's only okay for an SUV. I don't think having the glass roof helps. It does eat into headspace, which is a downside to having it fitted. Hmm. However, there is a solution. You see, if you're really tall, you can just recline the back seats like that, give you a bit more headroom. Actually, these seats are absolutely blooming lovely, very comfortable. Lots of under thigh support because the seat base is really deep. Now, it's handy if you're carrying three people in the back at once. You see, you've got a flat floor and that deep seat base with a nice soft middle cushion. It means that it's quite comfy. However, headroom does get a bit more of an issue here. Shoulder room's okay because the car's reasonably wide, although the roof does slope in at the side, so the two out passengers will then have their heads rather close to the roof lining. When it comes to fitting a child seat, there's plenty of room to manoeuvre even a big bulky seat here in the back, and the isofix anchor points are quite easy to get to, so it's not too much trouble locking the seat in place, and even a big rear-facing seat, there's enough room for one of those. Now, I do think it's a pretty practical car, though a BMW X5 does have more space overall in the back, and if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, then click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below. However, this still feels like a real premium car, and if there's just two of you back here, really lovely to sit in. So all the quality extends back here. And the Takumi model gets a Mark Levinson stereo with 21 speakers, which sounds brilliant. The Takumi also has these little blinds for the back windows, like that. Plus, heated and cooled rear seats. There's USB-Cs back here, two of them, and you've got a three-pin socket there for charging bigger items like your laptop. You've got some folders on the seat backs for storing stuff. Large door bins, good. What's also good is this, look. You have some cup holders there which are hidden until you need them. Once again, nicely damped. However, this is where Lexus does drop the ball a little with their damping. So watch this, there's storage under there, but and this isn't damped itself, look. It just flops down. Let's just try the actual middle panel. Did they run out of money when it came to damping, when it came to the back seats here? What a shame. Anyway, you've got some through loading. So you can carry longer items and two people in the back at once. And that brings you on to the boot and how much luggage you can carry in this new RX. And now we come to one of the biggest problems with the Lexus. RX. So price-wise, it's halfway between a BMW X3 and an X5, but in terms of boot capacity, it's just the same as an X3. So you've got 460 litres of space, which is about the same as the hybrid X3. However, the hybrid X5 has 650 litres of space, so it's about half as big again as what you have here. It's not all bad though, look, you have no load lip, so it's easy to slide things in and out, and the boot itself is a nice square shape. You also have electrically folding rear seats, though they do take so long that I should be able to explain the rest of the boot in the time they take to fold down. So look, you've got a 12 volt socket there and a little hook which can hand things off up to four kilograms because it says it on there, some tie down points as well. Ooh, lovely. I'm still waiting for them to do their thing. Now, once they are folded down, they don't go completely flat, but there's not really a gap in between the base and the seat back, so you can slide things to the front like that. Uh, yeah, there we go. Anyhow, that does bring on to five annoying things about the new Lexus RX. While you have climate control in the back and you can alter temperature, you can't change the fan speed. It's all dictated by what it is in the front. Yes, you can open and close the vents a little bit, but if they've got the fan on low in the front and you want it on full blast, there ain't nothing you can do from back here like you can in some other premium SUVs. Some car manufacturers have complained about the fact that when I find out that 
their car's load cover won't fit underneath the boot floor like it went on this Lexus, I then yeet the cover and therefore damage it. So we've had to come up with an alternative solution so that I don't actually damage the load cover. So here we go, yeet! Yeah, that'll learn it. By the way, no low covers were harmed in the making of this segment. Changing the car's driving mode appears to be a two-step process. So you have to touch that car icon first, which is quite small and a bit tricky to hit when you're driving. But, and then you can change the driving mode once again on the screen. A simple toggle button down here on the steering wheel would be much better. The tank capacity of the Lexus RX isn't that good. Maximum is 2,000 kilograms. It's the same for all models. Compare that to a BMW X5 hybrid, which can tow 2,700 kilos. And if you go for a non-hybrid X5, that can tow 3,500 kilos. Just saying. It's a bit of a disappointment that on a premium car such as this, the rear view camera doesn't have a little integrated washer system. It means that when you're driving and it's grimy, you have to occasionally get out and give it a bit of a wipe so you can use the camera properly. I had to do it earlier, but I chose to lick it clean. Mm, it's a bit salty. However, it's not all bad. That brings on to five cool things about this Lexus RX. You see, the 360 degree camera can actually paint in what it's seen ahead of you. So it's effectively like being able to look underneath the car, which is really handy if you're trying to drive off-road and avoid obstacles. So have a look at this. You'll see it just paint in now. Look, ooh. And then when you continue driving around, you're seeing underneath the car, which is perfect to make sure that you don't go over some nasty rocks. Then there's this other feature. If you've got some tall cameraman in the back seat and you can't see past their big stupid head, flip that switch, and then you have a live camera feed at the rear as well. Now you can see behind you. The depth of the cup holders are perfect for coffee cups. However, not so much for bottles of water. Could do with being deeper. We can actually increase the depth of this cup holder. Look, press it down like that. And if you want to put it back up again, you just press this button and it rises up. Be a coffee cup. To open the doors, you just press this button here, look. See? Now, this is not a new feature. However, you do have to have a fail safe in case the car's battery goes dead. That one won't, you see. And usually you'll have another handle elsewhere to open the door. Whereas on this, it's just the same device. Look, you just pull that out like that. And you're good. Oh, did I mention the uh, rear windows also go all the way down? You can control the front passenger seat using these buttons here. So you can move it backwards or forwards to give yourself more leg room and alter the angle of the backrest as well. So you can move it out of the way to really, really ooh, stretch out. Make it like a limousine. Can be a bit of a problem though, if someone decides they want to sit there because you'd think that then they will get priority. The best sensor in the seat, you know, to like just override these buttons but actually they do still work. So if he just starts to like move his chair back, I can like not control it, but just interrupt and make it just a little bit painful for him. Yeah, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, just, and end up in a bit of a fight. And I can imagine this happening with parents and their children. The kids just wind them up once they've got a little bit bored of whatever they're watching on their iPads. The motors for the electric windows on this car are just so quiet. Have a listen to this. That's so luxury. Okay, engine choices. So there's two self-charging hybrids, you know, old school hybrids like the Prius. So the engine level car has a 2.5 litre natural spray petrol engine made to an electric motor, drives the front wheels via a CVT automatic gearbox. And on the rear axle, you have another electric motor. The combined power output is 250 horsepower. Then in the F Sport model, you get a 2.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine. Once again, mated to an electric motor, drives the front wheels, only this time via a six speed automatic gearbox. Once again, on the rear axle, there's another electric motor, so four wheel drive. Combined power output of the F Sport, 371 horsepower. Then we come to this car. It is the plug-in hybrid. So it uses the 2.5 litre natural aspirated petrol engine mated to a CVT automatic gearbox. Once again, electric motor on the front axle, another on the rear axle. That produces 309 horsepower. It's all a bit confusing. Anyway, what I've done 
it's just configured my favorite Lexus RX using the CarWow configurator. Now, if you want to find out what the car is and the saving on it through CarWow, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. I'm going to start off by seeing what the Lexus RX is like to drive in town. So I've got the system in like auto EV hybrid mode. So it's just going to decide how it operates its motors and its engine and so on and so forth. But when you're traveling around town, most of the time it's just going to have you in EV only mode. So it's really, really quiet and peaceful. So it's also peaceful. The suspension, it's good over bumps. It's not like the softest or the squidgiest, but it feels compliant and comfy. Got a good view out as well. So dash is quite low, which helps your forward visibility. And this little light there, that little window, just reduces the blind spot created by the A-pillar and the view at the back's good as well. Slight issue is the turning circle. It's 12.6 meters, which is not the best. It's you know, it's similar to BMW X5 and Audi Q7, but something like a Volvo XC90 has a better turning circle. I'm going to have to deploy the cameras. And they did their job. So I had more room than I thought at the front there. I managed to make it round here, that's good. Steering's nice and light as well, which makes those kind of manoeuvres quite easy. What's less good? Brakes. Not that they don't work, they just seem a little bit overly sensitive. A bit like me when I read the YouTube comments when I've got a hangover. You know, I'll be looking at them, people going, yeah, you look like Jeffrey Dahmer in those new glasses, Matt. It just upsets me. And other people going, Matt, you're looking a bit old. You know, you've got some wrinkles and stuff like that. Normally, I'll be like, I don't care, of course I've got old. You know, I've been doing this like over 10 years now. You've got old in the past 10 years. It's, it's called being alive. You get older. But after a hangover, I do take it to heart. And these brakes definitely take the slightest touch to heart. They could do with being a little less enthusiastic. However, let's find out what this car's like when you're going a little bit faster at speed. Okay, so I'm in hybrid mode now. I'm gonna floor it. Engine kicks in pretty quickly and we're off. The pickup's really good. So the initial bit of electric power just does the job while the petrol motor kicks in and then it drives pretty quickly. What I can do is actually put it back in EV mode because this thing can actually drive at up to 80 miles an hour in electric only mode. It'll do 40 miles in electric only mode as well, but obviously not at 70 or 80 miles an hour. But what I like is that I can floor it in electric only mode and it won't kick in the petrol motor if I've got it locked in EV mode. Some cars don't do that, this one does. Though to be fair, if you're going quickly in just in electric only mode and you floor it, not much happens. Look, there you go, go from 40. This is electric only mode now. You'll compare the difference in the acceleration. There we go. <laughs> and then after a while, it was like, oh my God, you clearly want to go much quicker than this. It did finally kick the petrol engine in there, you've probably noticed. You might have noticed the noise a little bit as well. So it's got a CVT gearbox, which means that when you floor it, it holds the revs high. They can make the car sound quite noisy as it just holds the engine going ah, at high revs. Though you don't notice it so much in this because it's so well insulated. In fact, there's not much wind noise or road noise either. It's very relaxing to travel in and the seats really help with that as well. They're so, so comfy. But there is the issue of the economy. So this plug-in hybrid is supposed to do like 234 miles. That's if you use it properly and charge regularly. This one, in my hands, 36 miles per gallon. To be fair, I've been driving it quite quickly to assess it, but um, yeah, <laughs> not quite the economy you want. Speaking of driving it quickly, I'm now gonna put it into sport mode if I can without crashing. Come on, where's the blooming button? Where's the button? Where's that? No, what's going on drive mode? The sport. Okay, sharpen the throttle response a bit. Suspension feels the same, really. Doesn't make any difference to it. Well, not that I can notice. Maybe it's not supposed to. I can't tell any difference. I'm in EV only mode, that's silly. Let's go into hybrid mode as well so we get some acceleration. In fact, I'm gonna put the gearbox into sport mode. I could change gears myself using the paddles. You might be thinking, wait a minute, you're just talking about it being a CVT gearbox. It doesn't have step gears. Well, it artificially simulates them, but in not a very good way at all. So look at this, accelerate, change gear. It just, just doesn't feel right. <laughs> it makes it feel like the slowest automatic box ever. I'm gonna change down into second, fake second. Just didn't feel like anything changed. I'm gonna change up into third. Doesn't really feel like anything's happening. What is the point? Bit of a shame because actually this car handles surprisingly well. 
way better than I thought it would. Really grips well in the bends, the steering is accurate. Bit of lean, but not bad. It's very, very composed. It's more fun on a twisty road than I ever imagined it would be. And yet you've still got really comfy suspension while still being in sports mode. Brilliant. Obviously it's not as sporty to drive as something like a Porsche Cayenne. And if you want to see my four minute video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there, I'll follow the link in the description below. Lexus says this plug-in hybrid version of the RX can do 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. Let's find out the reality and launch it. Here we go. Oh, oh. I like the way it's changing through gears, but without it actually doing any like gear changing. How weird. Good time though. 6.1 seconds. That's so weird though with the gears. S1, S2, S3. Nah, mate, you're not kidding me. <laughs> the red just went <laughs> Pointless, these pedals are. Pointless. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Lexus RX? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the RX. It might not be quite as practical as its key competitors, but it is a lovely SUV. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And on that box there to go to Car Wow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car.